so there was a particular outing um, in late spring or early summer of 2009 that a big group of girls were getting together at one of our houses at a friend of ours named Lisa. We were at Lisa's house out on her back patio. We thought we were getting together to just have a girls evening or, or whatever the case may be. And at a certain point in the evening, Deborah finally showed up to the party with one other of our little group. Her name was Ann. And uh, Deborah and Ann were kind of late to the gathering compared to the rest of us. And um, it was at that time that Deborah told us that she had um, recently had some testing done and had gone to see a doctor and that she had just been diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. Deb Simon Had Divas was a group that we founded um, after we found out that she had cancer. We wanted to rally the troops around her and um, that was one of the ways that we thought we could do that by um, getting this group together and uh, raising money for the Susan G. Komen Foundation and um, we did that for Deborah and others that we knew that were um, fighting cancer and to honor those that um, lost the battle. Um, to cancer. The biggest impact that she had is the way that she carried herself through that whole, you know, two to three years of illness. Um, you know, you you typically think of people going through something that's serious and, and people rallying around them and seeing what it is that they need and, and what help you can give to that individual that's going through the, the serious situation. But with Deb, it was always about what she could still do for other people. Um, she was always still worried about what everybody else had going on with their situation. Um, she always had a smile on her face. Um, and so I think that that has a lasting impact on us as well. She was just always happy. You know, even the things that she went through during those two and a half years, and even in the very end, she was always smiling. And, you know, most everybody that you talk to, you can ask, um, what do you remember about Deborah? And they'll say her smile. It was so, um, so bright and so amazing. When she'd walk into the room, you just, she lit up the room. I, I think her biggest impact and the way that she still affects all of us is, is like I mentioned before, you know, we all, we all have struggles and we all face difficult times. And I think we all um, try and find ways to remind ourselves to try and handle uh, adverse situations the way that Deb did. Um, you know, with a smile on your face and a level of grace that was just amazing. In 2011, um, that of course is the year that Deb was too sick to walk with us. Um, and so we had made it a personal goal to beat the year before's total. So we had set a goal of $10,000. And Deb said, I expect you guys to hit that. And so we went and um, raised funds again, did the walk without Deb that year. She was still alive when we had the walk. Um, we were interviewed on Channel 7 that year. Um, you know, just different things. And so we got a chance to talk to Deborah, you know, through the TV, so to speak, because she was watching on the TV that morning. And we told her that we were there and that we loved her and supported her. And then that's when we announced that we had hit the $10,000 and that we had made our goal. And then she actually passed away a couple of weeks, like two weeks after the Race for the Cure that year. Um, so she was 39 years old when she was diagnosed. 
that year that we had that get together in 2009 and we first found out. Um, she turned 40, you know, shortly after that. Um, and then she was gone by 42. And um, she died on November 2nd, 2011. With the way they do Race for the Cure, they have, um, even though the race is on this particular date, they give teams like another two to four weeks after the race to add to their donation total. And so when we lost Deborah, there was still like two or three days left to get more donations in. And so we got together as a group at another member of Deb's Diamond Head Diva's house. Um, after she had passed away, we all got together and we came up with the idea to get a few more donations and make our donation total that year $11,211 to signify that she died on 11 to 11. Our total that year was 11 to 11. And so at that gathering that night, we got on the phone to some different people and we made some donations online and so our official year uh, total for that year was 11 to 11 in honor of the day that we lost Deb. So. You know, I have a lot of memories of Deborah, but one of the more special memories that I have of her um, was the last day I got to talk to her. Um, we knew that her health was deteriorating, um, and I'm not sure the time frame. I know it was after the race for the cure um, in 2011, but I went by to see her and she was sitting on the couch. Um, she really wasn't able to talk um, that well. I sat down beside her and as always, she was worried about me. She had her hand on my leg. She was patting on me the whole time. And, you know, I was trying not to be sad, um, I, I, but she was making me feel better about being there. She was comforting me. Um, and she told me it was gonna be all right. Um, that she was ready and with that being said I got up to leave I said one thing to her and I, I won't say what I said to her but she, she you know told me it was going to be all right and I just told her I loved her and that's the last thing and she told me she loved me and that's the last thing we, that we said to each other and I think maybe within a couple of weeks or maybe a week that she passed but um, she's had a profound effect on me and our friends in the neighborhood and um, I was blessed to be her friend.